What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp plugin tutorial. So yesterday I went through how to use Shape Bender to uh, create some kind of fun shapes. Today we're going to go in and we're going to use that to uh, just kind of mess around with like a honeycomb pattern and see what we can make. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so we're going to come in here real quick and we're going to create a canvas first of all. So we're going to start off, I'm going to draw a 5 foot by five foot rectangle using the rectangle tool. So just tap that R key and then uh, draw a face just like this. And then we're gonna come in here with the circle tool and we're gonna create a series of hexagonal shapes to create our honeycomb pattern. And so the way that you're gonna do that is you're gonna activate the circle tool, then come in here and type six. And you can see how when you activate the circle tool, um, it asks you how many sides you want. So if you type six, you can see how your cursor comes in here and it turns into a um, into a hexagon. So you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna draw a circle on this face. Um, and it's probably gonna have a radius of about three inches. And then you can come in here and you're gonna offset this using the offset tool and probably offset it about a half inch. So that'll give you kind of your hexagonal shape right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna select this shape. We're gonna right click on it and we're gonna click make component. But we're just going to come in here and we'll just call this hexagon. And we'll go ahead and create that. So what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and it's going to create this shape as a component. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move it over here. And then we're just kind of aligning it with our face for right now. Um, and then we're just going to make a copy using the move tool. And to do that just tap the M key. Um, with your object selected and click on a point. You can see how when I move it, um, it just kind of moves it around. But if I tap the control key on my keyboard, that activates um, copy mode and you can go ahead and make a copy just like that. Then you're gonna come in here and you're gonna select these two objects and you're gonna use the move tool again in copy mode and you're gonna move this right here. And when you do that, you're just gonna type in something like times 10. Um, and what that'll do is that'll create 10 copies in here. So with the move tool active, or with these two objects selected, use the move tool, tap the control key to activate copy mode, and then click on this point, and then type in X10 and hit the enter key. And that'll create 10 copies moving up and down just like this. Then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna come in here, and you're gonna do the same thing um, just with these objects right here. So come in here and select these objects, then move them across, and then click on this point, and then just type in times five. That didn't work, I'm gonna type in X6 and hit the enter key. And so what that does is that comes in here and that creates six copies of what you had selected across your face right here. So now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna erase out my rectangle. I mostly just use that as kind of a size. Um, I use that mostly as kind of a size inference type thing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and you can see if I double click in one of these and I select a face, it selects the face in all of these because these are all copies of the same component. So now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna delete out this center face. And then next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select. So, so right now if I was to come in here and I was to push pull these objects, you can see what it does is it push pulls all of them to the same depth and that's fine you could definitely do that what I want to do is I want to come in here and I'm gonna select some of these and I'm gonna right click on them and I'm gonna say make unique and all I'm doing is I'm selecting a series of these shapes that I can come in here and make a little bit different to kind of give some interest to this piece so that it doesn't just look really uniform and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the outliner so the outliner in here is basically this is where you can manage all your groups and components so this keeps all of your groups and components in here so you can see how when I click on these different shapes are getting selected just like this so and if you don't see the outliner just go up to window default tray make sure that box for outliner is checked but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna give these some depth so I'm just gonna click on uh, one of these hexagon ones I'm gonna double click on that in the outliner, or you could double click on it in your model as well. And then I'm gonna push pull those to a depth of probably four inches. And then I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find one of my hexagon two objects, and I'm gonna push pull those to three inches. Then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna find my hexagon three objects. I'm gonna push pull those to two inches. And then for the rest of my hexagon, 
just my general hexagon ones, I'm gonna give them a depth of one inch. And all I'm doing is I'm making this so some of these are a little deeper than others, just to make this a little bit more interesting. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put those in a group. So just drag your mouse across them, right click and click make group. And then we're gonna draw a line along the red axis um, that we're gonna use as our baseline for when we bend this shape using Shape Bender. So just start over here, draw a line kind of from your origin, and just draw a line across, and you can use inferencing to do this. So just move your mouse until uh, this point is kind of on the red axis, and then hold the Shift key, and that'll lock you to the red axis. And then just move your mouse over one of these pieces, so you basically got a line that's the length of this uh, honeycomb pattern. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of that line over here using copy mode. So just kind of the same way that we did that before. And then I'm gonna draw an arc across that face. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna draw a single arc just like this. And it doesn't really matter how deep it is. And I drew that to the midpoint and then I'm gonna make a copy of that. I'm gonna flip it using the scale tool. So select it, tap the S key, and then move this until it says negative one, and then I'm gonna move this back in place. Basically what I'm doing is I'm creating the path that I want Shape Bender to bend this along. So now I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna select this object, and I'm gonna use an extension called Weld to make that a single line, because you need this to be a single line to tell Shape Bender what to bend this along. So now what you've got is you've got the three, um, and you can find Weld either in the Sketchication Extension Store, or it may be in the SketchUp Extension Warehouse, I don't really remember. Um, but in any case, now we're going to come in here and we're going to bend this with Shape Bender. And so if you remember, the three things you need to bend something with Shape Bender is you need a group or a component, you need a base path, and you need a path to bend it along. So we have those three objects in here. So now I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select this face, and actually I'm going to go ahead and save this first. So just make sure you save a copy of this model because you start uh, creating a whole bunch of geometry in here and SketchUp doesn't always like that. So make sure you save a copy before you do this. But you're going to select your group just like this. You're going to activate Shape Bender. And then you're going to come in here and you're going to click once on your base point and then once on your curve over here to tell it that this is what it want, what you want it to bend your shape along. And it may take a second to do this. It is going to go in there and create some geometry and stuff like that for your preview. So it's going to take a second to process that, but what it should do is it should come in here and it should give you a preview, just like this. And so you can see how you've got kind of a preview of the way that's going to look. So make sure that kind of looks the way you want it to look, and then go ahead and hit the Enter key. When you hit the enter key, what it's going to do is it's going to come in here and it says finalizing all bending. So all it's doing in here is it's coming in here and it's actually creating the geometry that you were previewing. So give that a minute because that does have to go in there and create a whole bunch of stuff. And remember, the more geometry you have in here, the longer it's going to take. So always make sure to save a copy of your model before you do this. Perfect. So now what we've got is we've got our kind of bent lattice shape along here. And you can see how it took these thicker pieces and it bent them as well. So you've kind of bent this along a curve right here. And so we could stop right here if we really wanted to. Um, what I want to do though is I want to come in here and I actually want to bend this again along another axis. And so what we're going to do is we're going to select this object and I'm going to activate the move tool. And when you activate the move tool on this geometry, you should get these little crosses on here. Um, you can click on those to rotate your object just like this. So you can see how I went ahead and I rotated this object in place. And I'm going to go ahead and erase this curved line right here. But now this is along a different axis, so it's turned. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come in here and we're going to draw a line that's kind of the width of this object. And again, you can kind of use inferencing to make sure you draw that line um, straight across the red axis. Remember, Shape Bender does require that base point to be along the red axis. But once you do that, um, and you've drawn kind of your baseline, you can make a copy of that again, move that over here, and then I'm gonna draw an arc across this face that's probably a half circle. So you can kind of move your mouse and it'll lock to the half circle. So you can come in here and you can draw that line. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend this again um, and see what we come up with. So select this object, remember to save, then select this object, activate Shape Bender, select your baseline, and then select your curve. 
And this may take even longer than the first time because there's even more hidden geometry and stuff like that that's being created. So you may have to wait for just a second um, in order for it to come in here and give you kind of the preview. That's perfect. So you can see what that did is that came in here and that curved this along this line right here. So it gives you kind of a preview of this. And one thing you can do is you can come in here and you can tap the up key on your keyboard and basically when you tap the up key on your keyboard what you're doing is you're telling it to flip the start and finish of that line so if you wanted to you can come in here and flip this so that it starts to bend this way instead of, or it bends it along the outside of the face instead of the inside of the face in this case I did want it the way that this came out so I just tap the up key to put it back again so just make sure this looks the way you want it to look and then come in here and just hit the enter key and again this is gonna take a while to generate all your geometry because it is generating a whole bunch of different stuff you can um, so give it a minute to finalize all your geometry perfect so you can see how now this kind of came in here and this uh, bent everything along this axis the only thing I don't like about this is my little different shapes like this didn't actually get put on the outside they got put on the inside so that's definitely something to consider when you're doing this is to make sure that you're putting those in here the right way and really to fix that probably what I would do and let's go ahead and do that all right so what that did wrong um, and why that came on the inside of this is because this was on the wrong side of that line and so what you're gonna want to do is if you think about it if if you have your um, if you have your kind of lattice on this side of the line and then you tell this to bend this along the inside of this face um, what it's doing is it's just bending this so that this stuff faces the wrong way so all we're gonna do to fix that is you're just gonna come in here and you're gonna move this so that it's on the other side of the line just like this so now when that bends that along the inside of this face this will be on the outside so once you've done that you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna come in here you're gonna activate shape bender you're gonna click on this line then you gonna click on this face and now that this is on the other side of the line that should work properly so it's gonna come in here and it's gonna generate your um, it's gonna generate your preview but now that stuff's gonna be on the outside of our object just like this and you can see how that came in here kind of upside down from what we wanted so all we're gonna do is we're gonna tap the up key on our keyboard and so that'll tell it to bend this on the inside of the line instead of the outside of the line and that may take a second to generate there we go so once we flip that using the up key you can see how now these are on the correct side so all you have to do is you just have to come in here and hit the inner key in order for it to genera generate your geometry and that'll take a little while for it to come in here and do that perfect you can see how now your thicker objects are on the outside of this shape so now your objects kind of completed and there you go so and you can definitely come in here and you can like make a copy and you can flip that with the scale tool if you want to do whatever you want with it it's not gonna line up exactly um, I've never really been able to get these to line up exactly so like if I bring these across and match the bottom here you get some overlap here on the top but it definitely gives you some cool ideas for what you can do with shape bender Anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Have you been using ShapeBender for stuff like this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.